Hey little axolotls, welcome to another video or if you are new here, welcome to the tank. My name is Ezra and I happen to be a person with dissociative identity disorder which is kind of like the main focus-ish of the channel or at least kind of how I started it but I wanted to give a little bit of a an update I suppose like mental health update, general life update because I haven't really filmed a sit down update for a month or two, I don't know what, what is time. Life update, and you may have noticed, I don't know, um, at the start of this video, the intro that I didn't, you know, introduce like, oh, you know, it's so-and-so, like, alter-wise, it is Moxie, by the way. If you didn't already pick that up, I, f I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm usually the one that makes a lot of these videos, and you can kind of tell with me, or at least, you know, my care worker can, but I wanted to talk a little bit about that and where I'm at with therapy, I don't know whether I should talk about that after general life things. General life things, nothing has really changed. <laughs> Physical, actually. I had a disc issue. I talked about it like a couple of videos back, like I think late last year, I'm not too sure. But I had a disc issue on my L5-S1 and I ended up getting like two um, injection things or whatever. I also had a disc issue at my L4, L5. But recently, because I've also had nerve pain after bending over to grab like a sip of coffee that was on the bench, and I had a CT scan done for that recently, and it turns out now I've got minor disc protrusions at L1, 2, and 3, which were not there in the last scan that I had in September. So I'm, you know, sorting that out health-wise. I do have like a a brace thing that I, I have worn before but I got a new one today that's a little bit more sturdier just to kind of help keep my spine not aligned so to speak but that's kind of happening with that. I am looking for a new GP that is LGBT friendly, one that I can kind of get along with but also has good reception staff and I am thinking about getting a hysterectomy. That's probably something I'll do in a separate video talking about my thoughts around that. Moving on though, <laughs> it's like a weird segue of the sorts. Therapy. Therapy is going really well and I've said this before and I'll say it again, like I'm very privileged to be having therapy as frequently as I do, which is twice a week and that is obviously because I am on, like I'm an NDIS participant. It has helped me immensely and over the years of therapy, like I think I've been, I was seeing a psychologist, I think when I turned 19, thereabouts, and I've been in and out of therapy since then, like with different therapists, um, depending on whereabouts I've been living, whether it be Sydney or whether it be where I grew up. But in terms of dissociative identity disorder in particular, I was diagnosed in 2017. <laughs> I was diagnosed in 2017 and I was seeing a specialist for a couple of visits because this is back in my hometown and then when I moved to Sydney I didn't really see a specialist for that. I was seeing a psychologist that was paid for by my work that I was previously working for and then I started seeing a specialist for dissociative identity disorder or for dissociative disorders and that was in 2000 and 19. <laughs> Sorry, I had to count then. I was just like, it was the year that I met my partner. So 2019, I was seeing a specialist. I have since changed to a new therapist who also is trauma-informed, not a specialist in DID, but she has had clients with DID and she's trauma-informed and I trust her and we get along very well in terms of a therapeutic relationship. But I feel like I have made a lot of progress over the years, you know, since 2019 specifically, like when, when I'm talking about DID related things and my, I guess, goal, like I, I find at the moment maybe I'm at the point of functional multiplicity. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that entails, but the idea of fusion, I guess, is something that I not that I wasn't um, keen on in the past, but I didn't fully understand it or I was very scared of it. Whereas nowadays I am scared of it for certain reasons, but it's something that I, I really personally, because I'm not pushing this on anyone else, but personally I, 
you know, want to try and find who I am as a whole being, so to speak. And I think that, you know, working on that as, as my long-term goal could be helpful. And I've been talking about this with my therapist and it's something that I struggle with and different parts struggle with it for different reasons. But for me specifically, it means accepting that <laughs> because here's the thing, right? I, I'm fully aware that I am one person that, that alters, and, and this is my perspective of things, and, and also in terms of, um, you know, theory of destruct, destructual, theory of structural dissociation and everything like that, is that alters are all, like, we're all parts of me, I am parts of them, I'm one person and I can understand the concept of that and apply that to myself and completely be like, yes, okay, I am Kai, I'm Moxie, I'm Dakota, I'm, you know, Addy, you know, that's, that's me, Ezra, as a person, right? But I struggle to apply the fact that that means that the trauma like the, the traumas that I've been through in childhood happened to me. And that's something that I really struggle with because it's that, because at the moment it is very, and that's the whole thing, right? Dissociative disorders, being very detached from that trauma, being like, oh, Mila holds these memories or, you know, Addy holds these memories, that kind of thing and not like not thinking of those parts as myself in that concept as in 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 the this trauma happened concept only in the oh you know alters parts it's all me Ezra and that's something that we have been talking through in therapy lately and Mila has certainly been more present in therapy sessions talking with my psychologist, I know that she's around at the moment as well, but talking with um, my psychologist or my, my therapist about trauma and certain memories that she holds that she is finally, I suppose, comfortable sharing with other parts and in turn other parts are willing to hear what what she has been through if that makes any sense because yeah it's it's those those walls put up by the mind to you know protect you from these these things that happened or you know at the time things that were happening in order to keep on going through life and we're at a point where um a handful or a large portion of us that are, you know, whatever you would classify as ANPs, like we, we don't really hold trauma or very like minimal like trauma in terms of me. I have like slight racial trauma kind of thing and then from a relationship in high school, but I, I don't really hold that much in terms, like when compared to Mila, for example. But yeah, it, it's at a point where, where kind of working on unboxing, I guess, trauma and that whole acceptance that that happened to me as a whole person rather than this happened to this part. Yeah, I'm hoping that that made some form of sense. I know that like sometimes I do get comments on my videos and people say that they can relate when I feel like I haven't made any sense at all. So I'm hoping that maybe someone can relate to what I'm saying and that it makes someone feel less alone because I know that that is a very comforting feeling to have. Completely unrelated to therapy though, is that we might be moving soon, which is exciting, obviously. And I'll have to update everyone on that as that progresses, but I have zero minutes of uh, recording time apparently, so thank you all for watching, and always remember to be authentic, be accountable, and be inclusive. Weird end to the video, but um, yeah, keep swimming little axolotls, and I will see you for the next video.